Hello everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video for US soil for the trading week ending Friday the 13th of November 2020. Upward movement this week breached my close buy and validation point but it didn't make a new high for oil and after that prices turned down. I've adjusted the wave count at the daily chart level but the bigger picture and the expectation for the next direction remains exactly the same. I am still expecting a relatively deep pullback to end in a few weeks about 23.05 and if that expectation is wrong then that number may not be low enough. Elliott wave analysis first, classic analysis last as usual. This wave count for oil is very bullish. It expects oil is in a huge new bull market to move substantially above the end of this prior all-time high back here. This structure for the bigger picture is the simplest Elliott wave structure, a five-step pattern. Here's an example in a bearish direction, one, two, three, four, five, and we flip it round for a bullish direction. So the bigger picture sees one, two, three, and then we'll have four and five. The structure is expected to be an impulse and core Elliott wave rules will apply. One of those is that the third wave must move beyond the end of the first wave and then the subsequent fourth wave to come in years may not overlap back into first wave price territory. So although I don't have a target for you for this big third wave to end, I do expect it to move substantially above the end of the first wave to then allow a subsequent huge fourth wave to unfold and remain above this price point. But when price trends, it does not move in straight lines. Within a bullish trend, there will be pullbacks and consolidations along the way. The first pullback or consolidation within a new trend for oil is typically quite deep and so I'm expecting this current pullback is not over and it may continue lower. Let's take a look at how this is starting at the weekly chart level where this low down here is this point down here. This cycle or super cycle degree third wave may only subdivide as an impulse. It's the simplest Elliott wave structure and it has to meet all of the core rules for the structure. I'll go through the core rules for you while I outline what I expect to happen in coming years for oil. The first wave may be complete, I'm labelling it cycle wave 1. The second wave may be continuing lower and it may not move beyond the start of the first wave below 10.24. The third wave has to then unfold and it must move above the end of the first wave and it can't be the shortest actionary wave. Actionary waves are 1, 3 and 5. When the third wave is complete, then another pullback or consolidation should develop to last weeks or months for a big fourth wave, which may not move into first wave price territory and usually remains substantially beyond first wave price territory. And finally, a fifth wave should unfold. It's not a core rule, but a guideline states the fifth wave should or most commonly moves beyond the end of the third wave to avoid a truncation. And that will complete a huge impulse for Super Cycle 3. I expect this is going to last probably over 10 years, maybe 20. So this is a really big picture. For now, let's focus on this pullback or consolidation, which I'm labelling on this chart, Cycle Wave 2, which may not move beyond the start of Cycle 1. Let's take a look. I've got three daily charts looking at this movement in three different ways, or at least the degrees of labelling are different. I'm seeing the subdivisions all the same, though. The first chart is the end of Cycle 1 and the start of Cycle 2. I am expecting cycle 2 will most likely subdivide as a zigzag by a very wide margin that is the most common corrective structure for a second wave to be, particularly a second wave, the first big one in a new trend. I have a small 7 point target, sorry, 5 point, whoa, a 1 cent, sorry, I have a small 1 cent target zone now for you for cycle 2, calculated at 2 degrees, this is how to read my notation. Cycle 2 will equal 0.618 times cycle 1 at 23.05. Primary C will equal 2.618 times the length of primary A at 23.06. That target may be met in a few to several weeks. Looking at this possible structure for cycle 2 as a zigzag, 
a zigzag is labelled A, B, C and it subdivides 5, 3, 5. If I've got A analysed as a 5 correctly, then B, if it continues any further, may not move beyond the start of A above 43.77. The structure here of primary wave B may have continued sideways and higher this week, which was the invalidation of the previous labelling of this chart. Primary wave B is now quite a big sideways time consuming movement. This actually looks absolutely typical for a B wave and it's unfolded possibly as an expanded flat and that's actually quite a common structure for a B wave to be. Expanded flats do most commonly occur in B wave positions. Expanded flats are labelled A, B, C and they subdivide 3, 3, 5. An expanded flat has a B wave which moves beyond the start of the A wave and a C wave which moves beyond the end of the A wave. They are sideways consolidations in an ever expanding range. So if you to try and draw consolidation lines of support and resistance, horizontal ones that is, around an expanded flat, you'll see overshoots of support and resistance and then they end. I expect that's what's happened here. The structure of intermediate wave C is a five wave impulse, one, two, three, four, five, but we could label it one, two, three, four, five. We could see a little bit more upward movement. Four may not move into wave one price territory. The high of this candlestick here is important. Is important. This is, I think, 39.36. If we see a new, here it is. If we see a new low below 39.36, what that means is downward movement can't be a fourth wave correction within this little upward wave, which means this upward wave should then be over, and so that adds some confidence that intermediate C should be over which would then add some confidence that primary wave B really should be over because its proportion is quite sizeable compared to primary A, if I've got this label correctly. And so that's the Elliott wave rule I am using to determine this confidence point for you. It's quite an important point for next week. Draw an Elliott channel around this beginning of the zigzag from the start of A to the end of B with a copy on A. In this case I would expect C to break through below the lower edge of this channel on moving down to the target zone. Alternatively if we change the degree of labelling here and we move it down one degree instead of A being over here this could just be wave one of an impulse for primary A. One expanded flat for two, three, four, five to complete primary A and then we'd expect a big time consuming bounce or consolidation for primary B. All the subdivisions are the same, the confidence point is the same, the target's a little bit different, the invalidation point is the same. This wave count does not diverge in the expected direction from the first one and it won't do so for many weeks but I will continue to run it alongside for you because when it does start to diverge then it becomes important. And likewise if we move the degree of labelling of cycle 1 down 1 degree this could just be primary 1 within cycle 1 and this could be primary 2. Again subdivisions are the same, confidence point and validation point, eventual target pretty much the same. It's only going to diverge in prob probably in a few months this one. I'll keep running it alongside. It doesn't make a difference now to the expected direction but it may do so in coming months when it becomes important. Classic technical analysis now. Price essentially remains range bound, a slight overshoot of resistance and it had a previous undershoot of support. It looks like it's formed a rounded top and it's starting to move down. Bounces along the way, absolutely normal and to be expected. Resistance of 42 was not able to be overcome. Look for net support about 29. After the look of this piece of movement on this chart it looks absolutely reasonable to expect an increase in downward momentum before price finds support and forms another V bottom. This market does very, very typically form V bottoms. A little bit of push from volume pushing price higher this week is contradicted by a slightly longer upper wick this week. And on balance volume as well as price is at resistance. 
So I would expect it most likely to see downward movement or maybe sideways movement next week, but not upward movement next week. RSI is neutral, there is plenty of room for price to rise or fall, stochastics in neutral territory as well. At the daily chart level, a long upper work, this is a shooting star candlestick pattern. Price is essentially swinging from support to resistance and back again with a big overshoot of support here and a little overshoot of resistance here. ADX tells us at this time frame there is no clear trend, so we use stochastics in conjunction with support and resistance to try and identify when one swing may end and the next swing may begin. Here, stochastics reach resistance, then support. Price reach resistance, then support. Price is swinging up. Stochastics reached overbrought. Price reached resistance. Now let's expect a downward swing at least to support and not expect that swing to end until stochastics reaches oversold. When stochastics reaches oversold and price reaches support, if we get a breakout below support and it has support from volume, then we may have the end of the consolidation. And that's what the Elliott Wave count expects. It will end, there will be a breakout eventually. The Elliott Wave count tells us it's more likely to be downward than upward, as does that look of that rounded top on the weekly chart. We've been over ADX, on balance volume moving down from resistant, no support line here. RSI in neutral territory, plenty of room for price to rise or fall. That's all from me this week with your US oil analysis. I hope that all of our members are having a fabulous weekend.